Good morning. My name is Yoav Kainan, and I'm an associate professor at the University of Manitoba and the scientific director of the National Collaborating Center for Infectious Diseases at the University of Manitoba. And I'll try to talk today about crystal methamphetamine and the infectious complications associated with it and explain why this is a pandemic uh, that is happening um, across Canada. And we'll try to um, focus on the situation in the prairies. I would start by acknowledging that I'm um, speaking from uh, Treaty 1 land, territory of the Cree, Oji, Cree, Anishinaabe, and Dene people, and homeland of the Métis Nation. Crystal methamphetamine presents a syndemic among the most vulnerable uh, populations. It has made the news in the prairie provinces, uh, and it has been labeled as um, the tsunami of crystal methamphetamine, and um, it has become rapidly the drug of choice among um, injection drug users in um, the prairie provinces. In terms of uh, the Canadian data, the prevalence of methamphetamine use is still low in most recent surveys at around 0.2% of population. And the, the prevalence of use among Canadian students say, on grade seven to 12 is approximately 1.2%. But there are some lines of evidence showing that there are increases in uh, the substance use associated with uh, crystal methamphetamine, and that manifests an increase in drug offenses and seizures involving methamphetamine with reported increases of up to 590% between the years of 2010 and 2017. Several jurisdictions report at least a threefold increase in the use of methamphetamine over the past five years in people who are access uh, harm reduction services. In addition, in Manitoba, the, it's been reported the monthly emergency room visits by patients who are using methamphetamine has increased over 1,700 times between 2013 and 2017. And in Vancouver, um, among street-involved youth, a survey that conducted um, um, in 2005 to 2016 showed an increase in the use of uh, crystal methamphetamine. If we try to um, correlate that with some other lines of evidence that this is an emerging and increasing problem, uh, quantity of crystal methamphetamine seizures has increased dramatically in Manitoba as reported by police uh, department in Winnipeg, in Brandon, and by the RCMP. What does that do to the prevalence of infectious diseases? So I, I'll start by talking a bit about um, HIV. So Saskatchewan and Manitoba are leading the country in terms of uh, the prevalence of HIV and the incidence of new infections. And new cases in um, Saskatchewan are up to uh, over 150 per year. And in Manitoba, the most recent information is 120 um, cases or so in the last uh, two years. But beyond the numbers, what has changed is that um, the rates of co-infection with sexually transmitted infections such as syphilis have increased dramatically, as is shown here in slide number nine. For example, syphilis co-infection in 2017 accounted for about 7% of uh, the new um, infections with HIV. In 2018, that doubled to close to 20%. And in 2019, the data is showing that over a third of the patients had co-infection with syphilis. So what we're seeing is that the acquisition of one sexually transmitted infection is associated with multiple other um, comorbidities. Many of them are infectious. A similar um, piece of information is in slide 10 that shows the increase in hepatitis C co-infection rates from less than 10% in 2017 up to 20% and above in 2019 in Manitoba and much higher rates in Saskatchewan. And at the same time, that is also um, reflected with uh, abrupt increase in injection drug use among new clients to care. 
from 15% uh, in 2016 to over a third in 2018. All of those together show that there are changes in, in injection drug use, and those are primarily driven in the prairie provinces, at least by increasing use of crystal methamphetamine. And for the first time in 2018, injection drug use has become the, the primary mode of acquisition of HIV in Manitoba, again, reflecting the increase in uh, crystal methamphetamine use. If we look at the preliminary data from 2020, similar trends are continuing with um, the first 80 diagnoses of 2020 of them, um, 10 are incarcerated at the time of the survey. And that also is in keeping with substance use and it, the associated um, offenses uh, in individuals that consume crystal methamphetamine. What's the impact on success of our programs? So if we look at the internationally accepted 1990-90 goals for HIV, um, we are testing better. So we identify individuals getting closer to 90% of the first block of uh, individuals knowing their diagnosis. And uh, our attempts have been to reach linkage of care and retention to care. And if you look at slide 15, our retained to care number of patients diagnosed in 2018 is 75%. And there is a worrisome trend of decreased ability to retain individuals in care. So not only the numbers are important, but the, the characteristics and the complexity of management of individuals who are struggling with uh, substance use, and especially with crystal methamphetamine fitting with a um, chaotic lifestyle, frequent homelessness, and uh, food insecurity, all of those put individuals at um, greater vulnerability, making linkage to care, retention in care, and the success of treatment ultimately um, much more challenging. If we try to disaggregate uh, the data, and this is courtesy of uh, Lee McClarity uh, that did this as part of her PhD thesis, we see that um, individuals who are younger in the 18 to 29 year old um, ha have a lower probability of being retained in care, almost 20% lower than individuals of the next age group of 30 to uh, 39 and um, are much less likely to be on treatment, and only 50% or so are uh, virologically suppressed. So th that is pointing to the fact that the young, uh, more vulnerable population is the one that suffers from the consequences, and it's primarily linked to substance use. As I already showed, the uh, STBBIs are increased among crystal methamphetamine um, users and we are seeing in Manitoba um, a syndemic of syphilis with the highest rates in the country and um, nearly 50 percent of the people who are diagnosed with syphilis report crystal methamphetamine use so that is associated with uh, marginalization with the intimate partner uh, violence and with a concerning increase in HCV and HIV. We took another angle of looking at the crystal methamphetamine crisis and looked at um, bloodstream infections in Health Science Center, the largest tertiary center in Winnipeg, and we conducted an interrupted time series uh, retrospective study of substance use disorders of in, in adults admitted to Health Sciences Center in the periods of 2005 to 7, 2012 to 14, and 2016 to 18. And we collected some data on baseline characteristics, what substances are used, and what uh, bloodstream infections are encountered. And we found 190 cases of bloodstream infections with a steep rise, almost fivefold, between the first time period of 2005 and 2007 to the last time period of 2016 to 2018, as depicted in slide 18. Uh, of the bloodstream infection, the median age was 37, um, and um, that is uh, important to note, as well as that um, crystal methamphetamine was the most common drug of choice in the la latest time period and replaced the other substances uh, to a large extent. 
Staph aureus infection is the most common pathogen identified in all three time periods. And um, of the patients with severe infection involving the heart valves, infective endocarditis, um, substance use is common with crystal methamphetamine, the com most common drug of choice. And again, among that group of bloodstream infections, we see a worrisome increase in hepatitis C co-infection rate. So in conclusions, uh, the crystal methamphetamine uh, syndemic is uh, leading to increased prevalence of sexually transmitted infections, HIV, hepatitis C, and all of those represent um, the underlying determinants of health uh, that play a role in um, this form of substance use. Our numbers are increasing, but they don't tell the story because um, they don't measure the complexity of management, the resources needed to try to retain in care and manage individuals struggling with uh, crystal methamphetamine uh, addiction. The data, if we look just at 1990-90 um, data for uh, HIV, it doesn't tell us the full story and it misses uh, what populations are suffering preferentially or differentially from um, substance use disorder and um, are more vulnerable and associated with less likelihood of being successfully treated with antiretroviral. And that leads us to encourage disaggregated data for the cascade to try to understand who are the populations that we're missing. Crystal methamphetamine and STBBI syndemics in the prairies is complicated and requires attention to um, social determinants of health and to the um, development goals. And um, we encourage use of program equity performance indicators to try to help to shed light on the gaps on tes in testing and access to care and ability to link and retain in care. And here in the last slide, um, slide number 23, um, I've adapted information from a joint work by the National Collaborating Center for Determinants of Health and the Center for Infectious Diseases and credits to Margaret Howard Brockman and Claire Betker uh, that uh, proposes some potential equity indicators that I think would be relevant in the context of our crystal uh, methamphetamine epidemic. So to have some indicators that the public health program has the capability to access uh, populations, uh, population specific data so that the surveillance system is capable of recording and presenting the data disaggregated by age, sex, race, um, income and ethnicity. Those are really critical to try to address some of the underlying inequities that lead or are associated with uh, the emergence of um, crystal methamphetamine and the associated infectious complications. The second thing is that we have protocols and processes for information sharing and networks of partners uh, for purpose of surveillance um, with um, examples of being incarceration, shelters and remote communities. So those capabilities and procedures should be sh um, shared and the data should be disaggregated to allow um, to address some of the inequities and disadvantages in certain communities. And um, the last point is that uh, syndemic surveillance um, can provide early warning systems to detect potential public health um, call and to call for intervention. So an increase in syphilis may be um, pointing to the need for deployment of harm reduction and vice versa. And uh, developmental development and implementation of early warning systems is meaningful and should include partnerships and in input from populations that are disadvantaged. So those are some examples how we can add equity indicators to our work in trying to address this endemic. Uh, with that, I will conclude. I would like to thank uh, the Manitoba HIV program that I've used some of the data, Dr. Salam El Gabawi uh, for this the study in um, injection drug use and bloodstream infections and the National Collaborating Center um, for um, a lot of the work that I'm using today. Thank you.